everyone it's Ross and isn't this just a beautiful sight I'm just I don't know I'm over the moon this is the guest bedroom I'm in right now I got this the shelf here Home Depot I mean you can go all kinds of crazy with these we talked about this in a previous video I think we talked about getting the shelf and what my eventual plans were and this is what it's turned into we have three rows here, three different shelves. Um, I may even be able to squeeze in a fourth shelf. I'm not entirely sure how fast these trees are going to grow or continue to grow in this location. But for now, I'm pretty much sticking with having 32 fig trees at the top here, 32 fig trees at the bottom, or in the middle, I should say. And then we've got other things that we've started quite some time ago. These are the tomato plants that we started. They're growing very quickly. Um, they're quite thick, actually, the stems. And I've yet to thin these out. Um, you know, I have, I have thinned them out, but I haven't thinned them out to one plant. Because inevitably, we are going to plant one plant per hole, per square foot. And all the tomatoes will be trained vertically. Um, these are all heirloom tomatoes. I'm not growing a single hybrid tomato this year. Very impressed. I think I'm going to be with the tomato crop this year. Um, we need to water these. And also we're going to up-pot these. Because right now they're in these cow pots. Which are 3 inch by 3 inch pots. And I think they're great. But the tomatoes and the peppers and the eggplants, we also have an eggplant in here somewhere. I wanted them to get really large so that when I transplant these things out into the garden, they're ready to go. Um, we also started some newer tomato plants down here, courtesy of my friend Joe. Um, thank you, Joe, if you're watching. Excited to try Joe's heirloom varieties from his family. These are the onions, and the onions are growing phenomenally too. I mean, everything just grows so well under these lights. And we talked about the power of these lights. And you know what the extra bonus is of having them in this location is that there's also the window behind it. It's a south-facing window. We've set this up pretty inexpensively, I would say. Um, I guess that we could talk about that. You know, I wanted to talk about really this whole setup and everything that's going on here but maybe we should talk about how affordable this was maybe i'll do that in a separate video you know let's do that in a separate video but to continue on you know we've got the onions in here the onions are going to be transplanted out um march 15th so i'm not really concerned with them getting at least too big we're going to cover them with the row cover we do want them to get some size on them because the onions are based off of the day length, right? So as soon as that day length turns to a certain um, amount of hours, these onion plants start to um, bulb up. And I kind of want to get them to the largest size possible before they start to bulb up, which is pretty much what you're looking at here. I think this is a great size. Um, we're not really that too far away from the first of March so you know I know uh, I don't usually tell you guys the date of the video but I think today is the 27th uh, let me double check today's the 26th okay so really these things are not going to be in this location for too much longer we do have all the other cool loving crops down here on this little row here Really simple to set up, and you can see the great germination I've gotten here. I mean, isn't that just beautiful? It just looks it's just stunning. It looks so organized. I mean, everything's growing really well. All this new growth is just so beautiful to look at. Um, but this is all the stuff that we direct seeded that we talked about. We talked about direct seeding. We did a whole video on just the peas. Um... And then we did a whole video on doing this tray here. Now, I'm also going to add in some other things I have right next to me. We have some um, Aztec spinach. We also have down here um, perpetual spinach. 
We have the Verde de Taglio Swiss chard, which I really like. We've got some beets and radishes that I decided I am gonna grow the last minute. And I wasn't gonna do that, but we are. And essentially what I've done here is really gotten these things um, multi-sown, depending on what it is. And we've talked about this in the past, right? Uh, in those in those seeding videos that we did really only a couple weeks ago if you guys want to watch that check it out But things like arugula you can see here. There's a lot of seeds That have come up per cell and I'm probably gonna keep a lot of them. I'm probably gonna keep depending on uh, The numbers that I'm, I'm reading off of Charles Dowding's website He's the market gardener that I'm paying attention to the most. I really love his videos and I love the the accuracy and his methods. I mean, he does everything with compost, just like I do. Not really knowing that this was really the optimal way to do it. But he calls it no-dig, where you don't disturb the, toil, the soil and you add compost every year. That's essentially what I do in my garden beds, and I never water. I never have to water. Um, everything grows so well, I can direct seed into it. I mean, the medium that I'm growing in is just perfect. So what he does is he does these multi sowings here as well and he'll do like three or four arugula plants per a hole and spray and space them out like that. Same thing with the spinach. It looks like the spinach germination here is pretty good. Maybe not in that particular cell back in there. We're still waiting on the parsley to come up. The turnips are also being multi sowed and the peas. The peas are going to keep them to two per cell and space them out probably four to six inches. I've done uh, four inches in the past with just one plant. This year I'm gonna do it even denser. We'll see how that works out. Swiss chard, we're gonna do the same thing. Um, this is the this is the uh, the beautiful one. What is this one called? Uh, you know what? I know I'm thinking about this. I've already probably sown some Swiss chard and I've done the neon lights one. You can kind of see on the stem here, they're already getting that different color. That's incredible. But I have the Verde de Taglio in here, I think, in addition to the neon lights. We've got broccoli, we've got Brussels sprouts. Those will be thinned out to one per plant. Mizuna, um, I'm probably gonna thin them out to one per plant as well, if I'm not mistaken. I like to space them probably like six inches to eight inches apart. Uh, depends on when you want to pick them, of course. We have the rapini here. It will be one one plant per cell. The suho, ryoko, those are the kailan broccoli, the Chinese broccoli. Those are going to be sown uh, or thinned out one per plant. We've also got more peas in here because I mistakenly had sown something in the video that I did with you guys um, probably about two or three weeks ago. That video was uh, talking about choice some, I believe, and one of the things I had sowed that day. And that's not really something you wanna grow this early in the season. You know, I would say all this other stuff, you can get away with it. Some of it may vary in hardiness, but choice some, as an example, will actually bolt when it's too cold, which I didn't think was a thing, but it is. We've also got the Tokyo Bacana, which is like a Chinese cabbage. Komatsuna and Tatsoi, which are usually like spinach-like leaves. We've also got something else back in there. What is that? I can't even tell. It's so dense, but essentially we've pretty much stopped to this point with the Asian greens. I got to come back in here, sow some more things, um, and that will pretty much be good. Really only about 20 days from now, these will go into the ground so i don't maybe even sooner i'm not sure i don't want these things to grow too much you know these are not the largest cells in the world i don't want things to get root bound i certainly want to make sure that these things here are showing are showing their true leaves most of this should be showing its true leaves at least the first set of new leaves true leaves or the second set of true leaves the uh, snap peas could probably get root bound very quickly and I don't want that to happen. So I may end up transplanting out the snap peas before everything. And by the time this is out of here, these trays, I'm gonna be then starting new trays down here of our heat loving crops 
probably the same day that these transplant out into the ground, I then start new seeds in here of the warm loving crops, things like uh, herbs that I'm, d I'm definitely gonna do. We'll do a whole video on that, but this has really been a nice little update to this little area here. Um, this whole tray of figs is some that are just growing phenomenally, I've been growing the best out of the bunch, I would say. We have some down here that are growing quite well as well, or have just initiated growth. Uh, I've realized that these things really got kick-started up with some extra heat. We gave them that extra heat, they're finally growing, and we moved them now to this location, which currently is 73 degrees according to the thermometer. We have a higher humidity in this environment. Things should probably grow a little better, but not as fast because it's a little cooler than it is in the closet downstairs so but i expect all this stuff to start taking off in no time even things like this which appear to be doing nothing but if you look closely they are starting to finally put out some leaves and this is what i like to see we also have the addition of the sun which is really going to help these things it's a south facing window um, you know, it does heat up during the day. It says right there, it, the high in this location down here was 84 degrees today. So now things, the sun's gone uh, towards out, outside the window there. And uh, we're now down to 73 degrees, but that's not bad. Um, I would expect it's even a bit higher up here because heat rises, but um, pretty, pretty cool. I'm really excited with this whole environment this whole little setup and we'll do a video you know maybe tomorrow or the next day I'm not sure when I'm gonna schedule it for you guys but just setting up this whole thing kind of how easy it was so anyway that's kind of like a little bit of an update of where we're at right now with starting seeds and the fig cuttings and how everything's working indoors to then eventually get us kick-started into this new season alright guys Take care and uh, I'll catch you for tomorrow's video.